All right, family, I'm back. Your girl, Tasha, I'm all here prepping. So you already know what time it is. Get your drink, pull up, let's talk about it. I'm here again at the kitchen table. Um, yeah, so just a little thing, uh, you know, a few days ago, uh, I think I mentioned that hubby was not feeling well and to, I had a lot of people saying prayers to him and, and he just was coughing and not feeling very well, uh, a headache, things like that. And, and, and all that stuff subsided, you know, subsided. It went away. It was no big deal. Um, but he has been battling high blood pressure the last couple of days and he takes meds and, and typically with blood pressure, you guys, we just adjust something and then we see results right away. It's one of those things that you can fix. It is correctable. And normally we can fix it right away. And recently, yesterday, he had to go to urgent care because we couldn't get it. We couldn't fix it and it was skyrocketing. And so he went, everything was fine, right? EKG, everything's fine, you guys. Um, but what we think it was is because he was um, sick he was um, using decongestants, right? He was using NyQuil, stuff like that. And come to find out that stuff is not good for blood pressure patients, right? And so if you did not know that, now you know that. You learned that from Mama Bear. Um, but yeah, we did not We did not know that, okay? Um, and there's special ones that you can buy in the store actually for people who have high blood pressure. And it's something high, you guys, like 40% of adults in the United States have um, hypertension or or signs and the beginning stages of that high blood pressure or whatever. So something important to know, again, something that's pushed on us, pushed on us, this is something that's, that you need, you need, and it does, it makes you feel better, but obviously had a negative effect, okay? So <clears throat> it, he's fine now, okay? He, everything is good, um, but you know, we had to find that out the hard way in regards to why, trying to figure out why it wouldn't go down when it normally goes down normal. So thank you for the prayers a couple days ago when I mentioned that he wasn't feeling well. Thank you. Thank you um, for that. Now let's get into today. Today we're going to talk about 11 more things that you can do right now to get ready to keep doing the things, to keep the course, to keep pushing forward, to get ready um, before you can't do these things anymore okay so number one you know you know I had to do it okay I um I had to do it now number one is get food I, I mean I I can't put it any other way um it's very plainly you need to be getting food okay I'm not gonna harp too long on that but get food number two get your great depression pantry staples right work on getting staples don't get all the frivolous extra ingredients right now if you haven't gotten staples yet right get staples that's rice that's beans that's pastas right get your fillers um get your oils get your your stuff to cook in um your seasonings your basics of putting something together um you know your meats vegetables um fruits right staples right staples bulkers things that take up a, a lot of space right get a bunch of rice if you guys eat rice and then later you can get canned you can either get cans of soup or you can pressure can your own soup which is even better and then you just pour that right over that rice or whatever it is that you're cooking um do dehydrate flavoring different flavorings for adding to bean um, mixtures but get your Great Depression staples. If you don't know what I mean to buy your Great Depression staples, you know, get getting your um, yeast to be able to make your own bread. Getting your, um, what else? Getting your, um, you know, sugar, flour, that type of stuff, right? Um, there's a lot of videos. I've done videos too on, hey, here's all the, the the foods that would make a great, great depression pantry, right? Kind of a full, complete picture. Um, that stuff's important. I'll try to remember. I've been horrible lately, you guys, with my description and adding videos. Um, I used to do that all the time. I'll, I'll try to see if I can get this great depression grocery list that I did a while back and add that to the um, video. If I forget, then I'll... Um, add it to the um community okay i'll i'll put, repost the video through the community tab um but get you find you a good great depression grocery list and get those staples okay 
Number three thing I have is start scaling back and reusing everything. I mean, don't be throwing away no tin foil. Don't be re be reusing grease. Um, be reusing baggies. You know, if something wasn't major gross in it, wash it out with hot soapy water, rinse it, and and reuse those gallon bags. Those are expensive. Those gallon baggies, and they are great for all types of stuff. And we typically will put something in it. Like we're the worst with we the kids will open something that's quick food, right? A thing of burritos, um, anything, package a hot dog, whatever, right? And we'll throw it in a gallon baggie. We do that for everything. So the freezer has a ton of gallon baggies of things that are open, right? And in the fridge and stuff. And then it's like we finish that food and we just throw that baggie away and the baggie is virtually clean right wouldn't take anything to get it back to where you can clean it and get it reused so um i talked about this in my other videos too reusing stuff not throwing away jars not throwing away anything right now keep everything right now think of it as a as a homestead a very basic principle of homesteads is they don't get rid of a lot of stuff they keep stuff you never know not hoarding okay if you have trash you have trash but there's a lot of stuff that you keep because you can reuse it it can be repurposed for other things okay then we're gonna get in the period where you can't find things and what you have is what you have okay so start scaling back your food scale back your menus um scale back what you're what you're um you know and when i say scale back too um give me a perfect example uh last night um my son had some chicken and he wanted some um he wanted some um what is it chick-fil-a sauce that you buy at walmart that's in the bottle right they have they have it in the bottle that you can buy at walmart and i said i opened the fridge and and it's been used the last couple days right um it's gone now right and he was like oh do we have more and i was like yeah you know we have more but how about you use this barbecue sauce that's in here, right? Like, it's not that I'm so, you know, crazy that I'm like, no, use something else in there. But I instantly had the thought process of, no, we don't need to open another one just because you want some, sir. Um, we need to try to you utilize stuff that's in the fridge, utilize stuff and make sure and ensure that stuff is being used and scale back, you know? You don't need 20 types of condiments um, in your fridge to satisfy everybody in your home. Okay. You can scale it back. Okay. Um, that was just something that I thought about just now because it happened yesterday, literally, but, um, you know, sc start scaling back what you're using, um, and how much you're using. Another thing we, um, this is probably a year and a half ago, two years ago, we went from, so I still get paper towels. I still stock them. I still have them in my, my kitchen. However, in the kitchen, in the bathroom, we have um, baskets where we have those cheap washcloths and a ton of them, right? And those are what people use to grab for napkins, for quick messes, for quick pickups. That's what we use, okay, is those. Vice using paper towels for every little thing. Um, and therefore, I don't go through paper towels like we used to, okay? helpful for me scaling back on paper towels but everything okay so just think about what you can do and start doing that next thing i have is these are these next two are just some simple stuff that i learned a long time ago that helped me preserve these items one is spend a day and jar up all of your seasons seasonings get into your seasoning thing anything that is not already in a jar so i know some seasonings come in jar actual glass jars those are fine leave those but anything that comes in like a plastic especially if it's something that you use all the time like you have a, a special garlic salt you use you know your garlic powder your um onion powder your mustard powder your your uh whatever it is your parsley your this or that stuff you use every day if it is in a plastic container, first of all, buy it, start buying it in bulk. And then second of all, start right now, get jars, get a case of jars and start filling that stuff with jars. On Amazon, you can get plastic caps for your jars, for your mason bar, um, ball jars. Get a, And you can get like a pack on Amazon. I, I can't remember, I got mine a long time ago, but they come in a pack so that um, it's a multi-pack. Some of them are with the wide mouth and then you get regular mouth um, plastic ones. The one I got is all multiple colors, um, multi-colors. And then so you just put your seasonings, everything, salt, your everything in these jars and 
cap them up, okay? And then when you need seasoning for a meal, you're gonna pull out the jar of vice, your little shakers, okay? Now I know some people use their certain seasonings so much to like Tasha, I'm not gonna do that because I use it so much. So they, they don't they don't ever go bad, they don't ever get the seasonings, don't ever get hard because I go through it. Well, if you go through it, baby, you should be buying bulk, okay? And if you're buying bulk, that means you have a lot and you're not gonna be able to go through it quick like that and you need to put it in a jar, okay? I'm helping you, it will last longer. Now seasonings, a lot of times too, they, and this is really for long-term survival, seasonings get hard and people are like, oh, throw it out. Um, that stuff can be revitalized and still work. It won't be as potent as possible since the air was not taken from it, wasn't preserved right, but that that still could work in a sense for some sort of seasoning okay so i wouldn't necessarily throw stuff out but you need to start thinking about changing the way that you do things so my next one is same same line jar take a day take some jars jar up all your baking stuff so obviously your flour your sugar your different brown sugars your cocoa powder your baking soda baking powder, all those different baking item things jar them up I think, um, it is weird that now that I'm thinking about it, I think the only thing that I don't jar is my, um, and there might be a reason. I might have Googled, there might be a reason. I didn't jar up my, um, cornstarch. I just realized that. Um, because I'm just thinking about my pantry right now. Everything is in a jar. Everything is in a jar, you guys. Um, so yeah, everything is in a jar. Just make sure that you're rotating this stuff and not just filling stuff and then not rotating through. You gotta make sure that you're using, you know, your oldest stuff first um, when you're doing this, but jar up your, your baking stuff. Again, it's like any other kind of food. Um, preserving it is important, okay? All right, next thing is uh, ensure you have food pyramid preserved. So when you're preserving food, Obviously, you want to make sure that you're covering down with all the different things, right? You, you're, you're pressure canning some meats, you have some vegetables, you have some fruits, maybe you have some pie fillings, you have a variety of different things you're doing. You have some jams, um, you know, uh, but think about the other things, right? You know, that you're preserving eggs, that you're preserving dairy. To me, dairy is a huge area that a lot of people either... Um, don't preserve because they don't know they can um, but there's a lot of ways that you can do this there's a lot of products that you can buy there's there's powdered you know a lot of people know about powdered milk but there's powdered buttermilk powdered milk powdered um, heavy cream um, powdered uh, what else do I have that's like that heavy cream um, powdered sour cream um, powdered butter uh, all of those things those dairy products you can get right now from Amazon in a powdered form and then put them on your shelf and so one day when you need you're out of butter or you're or you need heavy cream for for a meal that you want to make you can literally pull out this powder and whip you up some okay um, so it's important to think about uh, don't forget about dairy right hit all your pyramid items um, making sure you have fishes I just thought about this the other day I've canned meat like crazy, all right? But I haven't canned, and we eat a ton of salmon, and I haven't canned salmon. I have, right? And I'm like, I need to get on the ball with canning salmon, okay? And so I'm gonna be looking, watching some videos, um, some different, some of my favorite channels on how they can their salmon um, so that I can get my salmon on the shelf because we love it. Uh, it, and that's what I mean by a variety, right? Those those good fishy oils, um, omega-3, you need that stuff in your diet. And so that's what I mean by covering down. So me just doing this list made me think about this. Actually, this list didn't. Last night we had salmon and I was like, babe, you know, I haven't canned salmon yet. Like it just hit me. And then just now I'm thinking about it too. Like, yeah, uh, that's an example. Like I, I haven't canned salmon, okay? Um, we have, you know, tuna in cans. We have tuna fish, salmon in cans. We have a few canned products, but we don't have like where I've pressure canned and preserved it myself, um, fishes or salmon, okay? They do that a lot in Alaska. So I'm gonna figure it out, you guys, and I'll let you know how that goes. Next thing I have is ensure you have, oh, I just didn't mark it off. That's the pyramid one. Next one I have is pressure, um, preserve for the holidays. 
right? Spend a weekend thinking in your mind, hey, what, what are we gonna do for Thanksgiving? What do we normally do for Thanksgiving? And can that stuff. Get a small turkey, pressure can it, and get a few jars of it put away. Get some ham cut up, cube it up, pressure can it, and get it on the shelf. Um, get some yams pressure canned, get some potatoes pressure canned, make sure you have some gravy packets or gravy in some jars or, or whatever, however you do your gravy, making sure you have your oil and your flour and your stuff so that you can, from the drippings, you're able to make your homemade gravy. Um, whatever it is, get those things and get them now. If it's, whether it's an item that you buy from the store and you're able to just preserve it, do that. If it's something that you need to process and actually cook and then preserve, um, and preserve in that way, like a meat, then do that, right? But think about those special moments. You know, maybe you do special things on birthdays. Maybe you guys do steaks on birthdays, or maybe you do a special other kind of meat, or maybe it's not meat, but something else, right? Um, maybe it's a certain cake, okay, that you bake for birthdays. Get those ingredients put together in a jar and, and preserved, right? Um, think about the things for special holidays and things to come because things are going to get tough. And listen, we'll adapt. If you didn't get those things done before those special days, those days will still be special because you'll be with your family, right? And you'll adapt to the things that are important. And a lot of those things are not important. But food does bring people together and imagine times are tough and you can still pull out something that was a memory and that you guys have done as a family together um, every year and you're still able to pull it off even in tough times okay so preserving for the holidays special days next thing I have is get your books you know um, lately I've been re looking at books books are my thing I'm all about books um, I've really been um, really into getting more recipe books having more options um, and food, you know, where I'm a foodie and I like to have options on what I'm able to cook. And so recipe books is what I've been looking at a lot lately. But get your medical books, get your gardening books, get your how-to books, get a how-to book on all of your vehicles. Each vehicle that you own or have, get your how-to book now, okay, for that vehicle. Um, uh, but get these books, anything that is a manual or a book, get your fiction books, right? Get your romance novels, your fiction books that you like to read, your favorite authors, get that stuff. Get that stuff in a paper form to you guys in case grid down, you did not prepare and you don't have a way to, you know, hey, charge that tablet or that Kindle or whatever, or your books aren't downloaded properly, right? And because there's no internet, you can't get to them, whatever the case may be, get you some hard stuff. Okay, so that you are ready um, for grid down and you have some other options if you're a big reader, right? Hubby's a big reader. All of his stuff is on, uh, you know, his tablets and stuff. Now, we've made sure that it's all downloaded. We obviously have plenty of ways to power it, so he's going to be able to do it. But what happens EMP or something bigger and that tablet's destroyed, right? It's not coming back online. Uh, there's no books, right? Um, we have books, but you see what I'm saying? He reads so much, right? And he, you know, the books that we have that he would like to read, I'm talking about his fictional, his fun books. We don't have all that stuff. Okay. The books we predominantly have are, um, educational books, right? How to make it books, skills, books filled with skills. And this is how you do this, right? So just, just something to think about. Um, number nine thing I have is make sure you have a plan for protecting your food. Now, most people would think, that's right, my girl's gonna go with fortification security, um, but I'm not. I'm actually talking about power. I'm actually talking about all your refrigerators, if your chest freezers, you know, if you're big on having a lot of stuff in the freezers, you know, what's your game plan for grid down? You know. Can you leave that closed in a short um, a short period of no power? Let's say no power for five, six hours. You absolutely could leave it shut and actually have a chance of that stuff staying okay, okay? Um, but you get past a certain point of no return, you're gonna start losing food if you don't do stuff. Um, some people have a plan that grid down for long term, they'll just can everything that's in the freezers. Um, and that's possible to do as long as you still have the way to can, right? Meaning you didn't have an electric stove, you have um, 
a gas stove and it's still you got there's still gas coming in to be able to do that or you have a backup stove big burner for outdoors but you have a viable way to can and then remember you know it's 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 grid down you know uh it takes a while to can food right so that means you have all this meat and stuff that you have to take out, you have to defrost it, you have to think about your game plan. You know, are you taking all of that stuff out at once so you can, de you know, start defrosting it? If you don't defrost it all at once and keep it in there and you're just trying to can as you go, you get to a point where you've opened that freezer so much that, you know, there's stuff that you haven't gotten to that might be bad by the time you get to it, okay? So that is a viable option, but think about it. Think about how much food you have too. We have two big chest freezers. It would take me a very long time to pressure can all that food, okay? And so to defrost it, okay, get it to a point of defrosting. And mind you, remember, it's grid down. So you have to safely try to defrost it. You don't have a microwave to defrost it quickly. Um, so there's just things to think about when people quickly just say, oh, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start canning it. Great plan, great plan, I'm just saying, Think it through a little bit more um, because it doesn't make sense for your situation. How much do you have in that freezer? How are you defrosting? How long will it take? Think it through. Make sure you have the backup way to actually use the canner. Um, so again, something to think about. Um, but power, right? You got to get your your power, your solar power generators, right? We have Equal Flows. We love them. We have Rivers, and we have the Delta, 1800 Delta, and those are good for what we have. Um, but you have to think, you know, you've got to get those. You've got to use them. You've got to see where Washington State is not always sunny, right? And so on a sunny day, charge us quickly. Okay, on a not sunny day, what's our plan? Okay, charge it with the car. You just have to really know your backup plans, how long does this stuff take, and and have walked through it so you know because you've got you've got you know hundreds and hundreds of dollars possibly in your refrigerators and your freezers and you know losing that could be a big hit even if you just have a, a combo you just have the freezer on top and the fridge on the bottom that's a lot of food okay that's a lot of money especially to, in today's world that's a lot of money to lose and so you need to have a way to be able to um keep that keep that going and you don't have to keep it going 24 hours you guys um you just run it for four hours keep it closed right keep it closed for four hours run it for four hours keep it keep it closed for four hours and there's there's depending on how new your refrigerator is how big it is all that good stuff and how good the generator de would depend on um those time frames right maybe it's not every four hours that you're plugging it in you know a lot of people they want it plugged in 24 7 right or plugged in for 10 hours and then um, they have a shorter period where it's off but then it's you know four hours and then it's another 10 hours on who knows right um but you need to practice, right? Because uh, your reefers, your chest freezers, they're not always actually on working. You know, once they reach the temperature, they're just holding that temperature and they actually shut themselves off where they're actually not even draining or using power from your power station. So those are the things that you need to learn and practice and, and get to know intimately how your stuff works, how long it lasts, how does your things operate so that you know and you're not figuring out those things you know, during grid down, right? Okay, two more things, you guys. Number 10, I have um, get your items prepped for all your babies. Now, yes, I'm alluding to baby formula, you know. It hurts me because as a prepper, you know, we don't have any babies. You know, if I had a baby, you would have never caught me with my with my pants down with the with baby formula. Now I know I don't know much about baby formula. I don't know how long it keeps, um, but you definitely wouldn't. I would I would have had a few. I would have had as much as I could keep without it going bad. Okay, and I would have already had my backups. You know, because it's a vital thing. It to me, it's like insulin, right? If I was somebody who had insulin. I would be going out of my way to figure out how to keep that, how to get more of it and how to keep it. Um, and it's no different with, with baby formula, but that's besides the point because I don't want to, I don't want that to come across as judgment on anybody. Um, but what I'm saying is prepare for your babies. If you have babies, you have infants, you have little kids, get all the things that they are, that they require, 
all the special medicines they require, any kind of special foods that they eat, things they drink, whatever it is, okay? Their entertainment items, get that stuff. Your fur babies, your 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 pets, right, that are in the home from the turtle to the fish to the dog, cat, whatever, get all the things for them. Get prepped the, their food. Get prepped their waters, the things they drink, their medicines, their shots, their this or that. Get all the things for them and don't get caught not having an item for a special baby in your home, okay? Elderly, you got grandpa living with you. What does grandpa require? What are the things that he used? Get the things prepped up, get the backups. He uses a cane. Have a couple backups of the cane in case that one breaks or something happens, okay? Get the things that he needs. Get the things you think he might need in the future. Maybe he's sitting on the toilet now, but he's not going to be sitting on the toilet, you know, here in a few months, right? You you already know, hey, probably in six months to a year, he's not going to be able to be able to go down to the toilet. He's going to need the chair. Think those things through and get those things, okay? Um, any other kind of ailments in your house, get that stuff stocked up, those special items that you need for special family members. Other animals in your homes, chickens, those quails, those rabbits, uh, those, if you have a farm and you have pigs and cows and whatever it is, goats, get those items, okay? If you are a homesteader and you don't, you're new to kind of having that preparedness mindset, if and don't get me wrong, I know that you're great. Typically, homesteaders are great at self-sufficiency, right? They're great at growing food, doing things, preserving food, stuff like that. But they don't always think forward about preparedness, prepping. You can prep and homestead, okay? You should be prepping and homesteading. You should have a homestead, be growing and thinking about being self-sufficient, and self-reliant but you should also be taking advantage of the system and preparing and stockpiling okay you can't produce everything um but you should have a stockpile you should be preparing and prepping things and getting things and have things stocked up okay um i mean it's just silly to be like oh i'm not gonna go get stuff from the store because i'm a homesteader and i believe that i should just get it from my land and, and maybe hey if that's what you believe in but are you truly trying to make it like a hundred percent like I don't understand why you want to stack your cards is, is all I'm saying, okay? Um, but get those things, get that extra feed. Those chickens, whatever in life that makes those chickens happy, you know, the extra hay for their beds, the extra food, feed, snack, whatever, all the things, get those things, okay? Um, get the extra extra things too for the chicks maybe the stuff you the pan you put the food in right is feed in maybe getting a backup one of those whatever um you know maybe i'm saying too much because hey when times get tough you'll adapt and let's say something as simple as the feeder breaks you would just find something else to put stinking food in that they could eat out of right um and it doesn't have to be so fancy as oh i've got a backup feeder right so it's it's not that it's totally necessary my point is though think about food think about your animals and all your babies your different types of babies and get the things that are needed for them okay and think about the future and and make sure that they're stocked up prepped up okay and then my last one is um definitely me 100 percent again i i could not leave it out and that is please 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 get water okay right now uh, in my back pantry area. It's just like, like by the back door. Um, next to one of the freezers, we have six cases of water right now. Now, we have a family of five right now that are currently in the home. And when, you know, there's people that kill me that would walk in right now and be like, oh my gosh, you guys are really stacked up for water. Like, you guys have a lot of water. <laughs> and I would be like, are you kidding me? six cases of water for a family of five you know with with growing boys like there's come on like that is not a lot of water one two if you're drinking it every day it's really not enough, a lot of water and if you're keeping that and you're drinking let's say like this i try to get them to drink out of the berkey every day like stop drinking the bottled water drink the berkey but let's just say you're drinking tap water right you're drinking your filtered water and you're not touching your bottled waters the minute you start drinking those, trust me, that's nothing. You're going to go through those six cases of water quickly, okay? And so you need to think about water. You need to think about bigger containers of water, bigger sources of water that you can put in your garage or in a shed or outside. Water catchment. If you live somewhere where it is rains and you don't have water catchment uh, set up yet, 
um, you're not, you're not good yet. Okay. Um, like how silly you need to get the things done that, that involve water. Okay. Um, get your gallons of water, get your distilled water, get your, get water, get water. There's smaller, you know, there's 50 gallons, 55 gallon drums, but there's much smaller ones. Um, there's, there's 30 gallons, there's 20 gallons. You can buy five gallons everywhere. There's three and a half gallons. There's all types of stuff. Okay. Okay. I think this is the one area that I have done on my Amazon influencer page. So go in the description box below. If you click on the link and go to the water preparedness, there's actually a, a uh, page that I've built that has some of my favorite water products, water containers, water products um, done. I have so many folders, you guys, that I need to do for that. But for that one, I think that one is done and you can go in. It only lists me, I think, add like 15 products. So those are the ones that I like um, the best that are in there, okay? Um, but again, you can help support me if you go through that page and, you, and you're and you logged on under um, under me, you went to that page and logged on, anything you buy um, will help me, okay? Will help my affiliation. Um, but I so I hope that these 11 things, 11 more things, I know every day we've been trying to bring you more lists, more stuff to get, more things to just think about, think through, get done. I hope this was helpful for some of you. Again, in the comments below, we have great subscribers who comment all day long with great information. And so there's so much to be learned in the comments. Always on for I'm blessed because this channel people like to share and there's not that many trolls praise be to god and there's a lot of people that are just earnestly want to help and so watch these videos and thank you for doing that but then always make sure you read those comments because i learn something every single day in the comments and i'm pretty sure that you'll learn something too if you take the time to read through the comments as well because there's a lot of people sharing a lot of good information okay and the things that they're doing um right now so I hope you guys stay well. No video tomorrow because it's Sunday. I will see you guys bright and early Monday morning. All right. So take care.